this is something which we're actually going to tweak the template on today. So I decided I wanted a parallel drums distortion. Normally I like Sansamp for distortion, but Sansamp is not phase coherent. For whatever reason, there's some sort of crossover network in there for the different types of distortion. And if you put it parallel and bring it up, everything starts to sound phasey. So I thought, well, okay, I'll start with some lo-fi. That'll be good. And it's really subtle. And then I'm going into a trash too. This is the least subtle thing in the entire template. This is smashing the hell out of everything. So before we look at the settings of this particular plugin, I'm going to go ahead and get rid of the lo-fi. I don't need it. It's not adding anything to this picture. This trash too, it probably started from a preset of something, but there is a filter, there's trash, and there are dynamics. I was just looking for something that was really blown up. So what this sounds like when you listen to it is a very distorted room mic. What it feels like when you blend it in with the drum kit is, wow, my drums are badass. It gives them power that you don't get without this distortion. I don't know why it works as well as it does. When you listen to it on its own, it sounds terrible. When you blend it in with the rest of the drum kit, it really makes the drums sound great. It's down at minus 14.5 because of how much level will come out. It also has an unbelievably broad dip in the mid-range because it gets rid of all of the symbols that have just been made unlistenable by all the distortion. So this is all about mid-range and low-end, not, and by mid-range, I mean below 1K. It's kind of low to low mids, and the higher mids of the cymbals are gone, and then I'm letting whatever air through might have been there, just for a little bit of extra crispiness on the drum kit. It's turned way down. It is also set to show me mute automation. This will almost never be in all the way through a song. It will usually just be in in the choruses, and rather than mute the send to it, it's just as easy to mute the return, because it doesn't have any sustain to it. So it doesn't matter where I actually do the mute, it's going to sound the same. And this way, like let's say it's drums cut to a grid, I can just go in grid mode, and with my grid set to one bar, just start slamming mute automation points in there, and now this will turn on in the chorus and turn off. I can also drag this track up right next to the kick drum and be very meticulous about where those breakpoints are. I don't need to see the volume automation on this, but I usually will automate the mute automation, so I leave the track showing mute automation. Just means one less click later on, and I can see at a glance if this is on or off. So there's only one other chain I want to listen to. We probably will not use it on this mix, and this is a drums dirt chain. These drums are very clean, they're very well recorded, and I have a feeling they're supposed to stay that way, but I want to get an idea of what it's going to sound like if they get distorted, so I can keep that in my head for later on. So I'm going to go ahead and play the chorus, and then I'm going to select the same tracks that are going to the fatso, and assign them to Drums Dirt, and I know that Send H is open. So what this chain does is make the drums sound like this. So it's pretty dirty. So now I'm going to turn it all the way down and start blending it in. And then as I mute and unmute, you'll hear that it just adds a little bit of weight to the drum kit. I'm probably not going to use it except possibly in the chorus. And that very brief snippet that I listened to before, I noticed that when we got to the chorus, not a whole lot happens. There are some keyboard parts that come in. And in terms of songwriting, it's absolutely a chorus. But sonically, not a lot changes. So this is something I'll keep in my back pocket to possibly turn on in the choruses. It's a little bit of ringiness, a little bit of length. And one thing that I don't normally do is I'm gonna actually turn down the send from the kick drum a little bit because I like what it's doing to the snare and the overheads more than the kick drum. So by just individually going to these sends, getting rid of a little bit of that ultra low end. I like it. I'm going to leave it muted for now to see if I can build the mix without it. I may come back and use it all the time, may not use it ever, or I might bring it in and out. Call out your iPhones, honey. I'm all at 
see. Could you be 